So this is just a quick video on how to join into an open round on using the mom and stitch. So I've been doing mom and stitch um, or Moosen or Corgan because this part doesn't actually differentiate. It's only in the connection stitch. So I touch my thumb, I slide out through the last two loops, over the two loops and under the cross for each one of the stitches that I'm taking. Now I want to connect and make a round because I'd like to make hand warmers or something to that effect. So I'm going to, as, as I have this row and it lays down my thumb, physically on my thumb and I can run it across my hand and for however long it needs to go, I wanna make sure that I keep it straight so that this roped edge is continuous and always up at the top. Now you'll notice here at the tail that the way that I started gets my roped edge just a little bit odd with that last stitch. So I can fix that by pulling the tail to the inside of this stitch, or I can just leave it. Either way is fine. I'm just going to leave it so that you can see what to do without bothering to deal with correcting that spot. So having taken this row as it's flat across down my thumb and across my palm, and I will hold it so that it stays with this roped edge coming off the top of my thumb and going around the top evenly all the way over here. Now, because this is mom and stitch, mom and stitch connects to the previous row using what is called an F2 connection because it comes from the front and it pierces through the fabric and doing so it picks up two loops. Now, I'm gonna to want to grab the first two loops. So this is one and that's two right up here on the edge. If you can't find them very conveniently because your start is wiggling and shifting around a bit, don't particularly worry about it. Just grab the first two that you can because you can always trim those off later. So I'm gonna take the first two, which is this one and that one. I'm gonna put my needle through them. So I'm going underneath that cross of the two of them, picked up one and then the other. And then I'm just going to go and continue my stitch. Touch the tip of my thumb, slide out through my two, over the two, under the cross, inch, drop, and pull. Keep my tail out of the way here. Okay. And then my next stitch, I want to move one loop further down the row on my connection stitch, but Maman is an F2 connection. So these are the two old ones that I took. So there's the older old one and the newer old one. And then this is a new stitch. So I'm gonna take one and two. I'm gonna take one new and one old to make my mom and stitch connection. Touch tip my thumb, slide up under the two, over the two, under the cross, pinch drop pull. And then I'm gonna do it again. So I'm going to take one new one and one old one Touch tip of my thumb, under the two, over the two, and across. And that is how I connect in and start my spiral. And as you can see, I'm going to start riding the top edge here and spiraling up. So my next row will continue and it'll just continue in one spiral going this way. If I wanna make it bigger, I have to do increases. So either two, stitches in the same connection or by just grabbing one F1 in the middle between I, before going to my next connection stitch of F2. Or if I need to do decreases, I take two new ones and no old ones, pull it in tighter. Those are my options for shaping. Just keep going. If you go, don't do any increases or decreases, you will end up with a cylinder that is this size. And if you want to adjust the start, we can talk about that later, but one of the ways is to actually go in and pull your previous loops just a little bit to shrink everything down so that you can narrow that down so that it isn't quite so sudden of a stop. Hope that was helpful. Thank you.